On the 10th Sunday of the season, we call to mind the inspiration section of our Unitarian Universalist bylaws, which says, as Unitarian Universalists, we use and are inspired by sacred and secular understandings that help us to live our lives into our values. We respect the histories, contexts, and cultures in which they were created and are currently practiced. These sources ground us and sustain us in ordinary, difficult, and joyous times. <clears throat> Grateful for the religious ancestries we inherit and the diversity which enriches our faith, we are called to ever deepen and expand our wisdom. Please rise as you are able and join us in our opening hymn, number 131 in the gray hymnal, Love Will Guide Us. Welcome to First Unitarian Church of Des Moines. Our building is located on land that has been home to humans for 12,000 years, including the Iowa, Sauk, and Meskwaki. Other animals, such as the least tern, once inhabited these lands in much greater numbers. As we enter this space, the ghosts of humans and other animals past are among us. We are called to join in the work of education, reparation, and healing for all species. Our purpose is to associate ourselves together for the study and practice of morality and religion as interpreted by the growing thought and noblest lives of humanity, hoping thereby to prove helpful to one another and to promote truth, righteousness, and love in the world. This bond of union is reiterated in our mission, love radically, grow ethically and spiritually, and serve justly. It's a blessing you were born. It matters what you do. Your experience of the divine is true and you don't have to go it alone. Today is the 10th Sunday of summer. There was a blue moon on August 19th and now the moon is waning gibbous. On the Hindu calendar, tomorrow is Krishna Janmashtami. I apologize if I massacred that. The birthday of the Lord Krishna. A special welcome to our visitors. Be sure to silence your cell phones. And for those of you on Zoom, thank you for tuning in and please be sure your mic is muted. If you are here with children, there is childcare or feel free to keep them seated with you or utilize our play area in the back. September's connecting packets are available now outside the sanctuary and the topic is radical hospitality. After the service, 30 minutes later in Griffin Hall, all are welcome to attend a forum inviting you into conversations about today's service theme. On the 10th Sunday of the season, we dedicate our chalice to the religious ancestries we inherit. 
Our chalice lighting words are from Reinhold Niebuhr. Please respond with the words in italics. Nothing worth doing is complete in our lifetime. <clears throat> Nothing true or beautiful or good makes complete sense in any immediate context of history. Nothing we do, however virtuous, can be accomplished alone. No virtuous act is quite as virtuous from the standpoint of our friend or foe as from our own. Jane and Paul Derrick, who I think wants to have you engage with them in this music, but they'll let you know. Welcome. We're going to be doing a song you know, Morning is Broken, and it's in uh, the hymnal number 38 if you'd like to sing along, and we'd love to have you sing with us. We do kind of a, more of a version of, of the arrangement that Cat Stevens did back in the 1970s. So please sing along with us. Morning has broken like the first morning, like bird is like the first bird Praise for the singing Praise for the morning Praise for the stringing From the first bird
My name is Jim Carty. I'm a member of the pastoral care team. A church is not the building, but a community. As a community of human hands and human hearts, we come together to share our laughter and our tears and to bear witness and to minister to one another as we struggle with life's sorrows and celebrate life's joys. May we hold in our thoughts and prayers this week. I have a joy. 1964 men's cross country team, six decades after capturing the conference championship and recording the program's best finish at the NCAA championships, the 13 athletes of the 1964 State College of, I of Iowa, now Northern Iowa uh, University, men's cross country team will be recognized and inducted into the UNI Athletics Hall of Fame. The 1964 Panthers were a force on the course. In the North Central Conference, capturing the conference team title with 36 points, which is really low, which is really good, um, with all seven runners finishing in the top 20, including top 10 finishes, uh, one, by our own Alan Kniep. <laughs> Weeks later, at the NCAA Division II Championships, all seven varsity athletes finished the four mile race in under 23 minutes to take third place. Five Panthers finished individually in the top 80, led by our own Alan Kniep. <laughs> And 25th place, formal Hall of Fame induction ceremony is on August 30th. Congratulations, Alan. Yeah. Please share now, either out loud or in the chat, the names of those you are holding in your hearts. May the care of this community uphold them all. May the light of our community shine on the broken places of the world. May the work of our hands and hearts support, aid, and comfort all those who hunger or thirst for water or food, justice or freedom. May we never look away when we are needed. May those who are grieving be comforted. May those who are tired find rest May the, may the broken places be healed. May those who are filled with joy and laughter be abundant. Uh, earlier in our summer services, Reverend Houghton from the Zen Center discussed how his tradition approaches meditation. Um, he said he's always struggled with guided meditations. As soon as someone says, clear your mind, he panics because his mind is never clear. So he gave us a pass instead, encouraging us to just do our best to stay in that place of non-thinking. With that being said, I have a small meditation to read from Body and Breath by Mary Gear. I invite you to imagine holding a ball of light it might be a glass ball reflecting the light of the sun, not too hot, just warm and comforting to your touch. It might be a beach ball, light and airy and colorful, or any other ball that you can imagine. As your body is comfortable, as you breathe in, raise that ball to the sky toward the sun. Imagine your ball absorbing the warmth and light of the sun, warm, cozy, comforting. As you breathe out, lower your ball to your belly, soaking in the warmth and light. Breathe. Once more as you breathe in, raise your ball to the sky, toward the moon and stars, the cool and quiet night sky, stars glowing in the vastness of space. Imagine your ball absorbing the coolness and quiet of night. As you breathe out, 
lower your ball to your belly, soaking in the cool and quiet of night. One last time as you breathe in, raise your ball to the sky toward all the planets and solar systems and galaxies out in the vast and beautiful universe. Imagine your ball connected to that vastness, absorbing the mystery and beauty of space. As you lower your ball to your belly, soak in the mystery and beauty of the universe. Breathe in gratitude for this day, for this earth, for this community, for this life, we pray. Blessed be. Amen. We now light three candles, ones for the joy and sorrows shared, one for the name spoken, and one for all that remains unspoken, but presence in our hearts. Let us observe a moment of silence. Today's reading is an excerpt from A Prayer for Choosing Day by Amy Zucker Morgenstern. May we choose love over fear, wisdom over cleverness, courage over cowardice, life over death, kindness over callousness, faith over cynicism. May we know that we choose not just for today, but for many generations to come. May we know that we decide not only for ourselves and our own, but on behalf of all the earth, its peoples and creatures, the waters and lands in which they dwell. We seek the humility to know our own shortcomings and uncertainty, even as we accept the responsibility to decide the fate of others. May we weigh our choices with full awareness of how precious is all we hold in our hands. As we ourselves are weighed and tested by the choices we make, may we be found worthy. May we choose as leaders those who will strive to do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly, 
and grateful for our differences, may we find in each other qualities worthy of our trust and respect. <clears throat> We come now to the offering, recalling the words of the inspirations section of the UUA bylaws. As Unitarian Universalists, we use and are inspired by sacred and secular understandings that help us to live into our values. We respect the histories, contexts, and cultures in which they were created and are currently practiced. These sources ground us and sustain us in ordinary, difficult and joyous times. Grateful for the religious ancestries we inherit and the diversity which enriches our faith, we are called to ever deepen and expand our wisdom. In gratitude, then, we give, for in gratitude we receive. Good morning. I'm going to adjust that so I don't have to do it eight times later. Okay. My name is Louise Alcorn. She, her pronouns. So it turns out I need to be careful about outlining my sermons while I'm on vacation. Uh, <clears throat> in early August, I was in Michigan beside a lake, sweaty and exhausted after weeks of stressful changes. I was also in cherry country, wolfing down fruit by the handful because it was too hot to cook, uh, while musing on my spiritual development, which is the theme of this summer. My journey has largely consisted of integrating a variety of sources to make sense of my spiritual self, which sounds really organized, but it's been pretty messy. So hence, cherry picking from different sources. Perhaps if I'd been in Minnesota, I would have apple picked this sermon. So in recent summers, the celebrant team has asked members and friends of the church to share their spiritual journeys, practices, and stories. Um, I really enjoyed working with Nancy Harris and later Warren Stein on their summer services. Mm -hmm. They were great. So when I was asked to speak this summer, I figured I'd sit down and I would flesh out my elevator speech for you. Uh, Mark Stringer, former minister of this church, used to exhort us to create our own elevator speech about our UU faith. Basically a clear, short explanation of what UU is to you, which freaked me out when he asked us. When I was young, I was raised UU, and so when I was young, about all I could articulate was, um, uh, we respect others' beliefs, yeah, um, we try to be kind, um, uh, respect the earth, and um, potlucks. 
still true, but um, I fleshed that out a little bit. So the cherry picking concept from here and there metaphor is pretty apt as UUism is meant to pull from many traditions, right? Today we call it faith formation, but when I was a kid, religious education, uh, when I was a kid included a lot of curriculum experimentation. It was the seventies, macaroni art, uh, and no small amount of confusion. But I've talked about that before. So today I thought it might be amusing to give you a glimpse into how I pick my spiritual cherry basket. There, there's my metaphor. I got it for you. My messy, squishy process of figuring out what, what in the world has meaning to me. So, like a greatest hits album, I revisited the services we've hosted this summer on the theme of exploring our spiritual paths. Uh, from Reverend Laura Kim's bird theme service in June right up to now. So greatest hits. So I have to stop and say this. So if you want my actual elevator speech writ large, um, just listen to Al Powers talk on August 11th. Um, seriously, I got back from vacation trying to rack my brain to explain my beliefs while also trying to prep to go back to work. The next day, I came to church and Al just pretty much laid my worldview out on a platter. Bingo. Gently optimistic secular humanism. Yep. Add a dash of magical thinking and that's probably me in a nutshell. He even had Bruce play Wonderful World by Louis Armstrong, which always feels like the perfect humanist anthem. So here are some summer services, cherries of wisdom that resonated with me. Reverend Joyner encouraged us to be aware of and connect to our existence in the natural world. So some of you know, I'm afraid of birds. Yeah, but Laura Kim, bless her, is slowly bringing me around on the whole bird thing. Like I can appreciate them, I'm still scared, but I can appreciate them. Later in the summer, Bill Brock read a Mary Oliver poem uh, declaring we were part of the family of things. Um, by the way, Mary Oliver showed up a lot this summer. She seems to just get us UUs, just saying. As a child in the UU church, there was this time in the late 70s when Native American spirituality was all the rage. That family of things always made sense to me. So I was totally on board with feeling the air, centering yourself in the earth, opening yourself to nature. I got a bit annoyed with all the drumming though. Uh, even at nine years, yeah, right? Even at nine years old, I felt icky about cultural appropriation even before I knew what that word was. At the same time, I did know that my Sunday school teachers were well-meaning, kind-hearted, and occasionally lightly stoned hippies. Uh, so just as in much of my life to come, I cherry-picked what I needed from the experience and let the rest go. I still suck at drumming. So last June, Reverend Houghton from the Zen Center reflected that our spiritual journey is following a path down which our hearts are drawn. I love that. I thought that was fabulous. When asked about his beliefs, he prefers to say he feels it or knows it rather than believes it, which is a good way to approach an elevator speech. I don't know that I can say what I believe, but I can tell you how I feel and what I know. Hearing other people's journeys always makes me question my own, which is probably the point. Listening to Reverend Houghton describe his life-changing journey to Buddhist priest in the second half of his life, my brain asked, so what have I done? And now in what I hope are my middle years, what's my second half? Where has my heart drawn me? Short answer, into public service. Again, I've talked about that before, but that cherry's picked, great. 
In early July, Amy Landrigan from Central Iowa Shelter Services encouraged us to do what we can for those in need, to see them, to see ourselves. The initial reading that week, A Culture of Care, had me taking notes on my order of service. It was really good. I need to go back to it. So did listening that week mean I went out and volunteered my already overbooked time at a shelter? No, not yet. I did go home and gather up every good pair of shoes I have, which I haven't worn in a while, so someone can walk in comfort. I spent a moment in gratitude for what I have and what I can give. And gratitude is a very tasty fruit. My longtime pal Sally Buckholt showed us the tapestry of her woven spiritual journey. During the meditation, we heard that none of us alone have the answer. Well, thank goodness for that, because I need help with the questions. Um, Sally actually met with the Pope, the Pope, around her community organizing work. Again, what the heck am I doing with my life? She shared that her tapestry is on a loom of power, love, anger, and imagination. She reframed power, and this hit me, via the words of Dr. King, and I listened and I added that to my basket. Some of you have heard my services over the years on the topic of fear. It's my big thing. Similarly, Sally suggested we should get more comfortable with anger. Yeah. For me, anger comes out of fear. And so much of my internal life is woven, as it were, around how I approach my fears. In the reading that Elizabeth uh, shared earlier, we are encouraged to choose love over fear, wisdom over cleverness, courage over cowardice, life over death, kindness over callousness, faith over cynicism. That path is a constant struggle for me, but I listen to that reading and I learn from it and it goes in my basket. Now, if, if you heard any of my fear services, you know I like to keep it funny. And it's not because I don't take these deep things seriously, but it's because I do. And this stuff is hard. And here's a permanent addition to my spiritual basket. Everything is a bit easier if you can laugh at yourself, at life's absurdity, but not at others' pain. A newer friend of mine, Elliot Nolte, asked us to pay attention, to pray attention, to where we are and how we connect with others. A reading they offered echoed the words of one of my favorite songs from church choir, We Are, by Dr. Isaiah Barnwell of Sweet Honey in the Rock. Bruce very kindly played it during the offertory. I remember my mind just went to that song as Heidi Levine gave the reading, and in my head, it's the soundtrack of Eliot's sermon. <laughs> this is from the song, we are, we are our grandmother's prayers. We are our grandfather's dreamings. We are the breath of the ancestors. We are the spirit of God. We are mothers of courage, fathers of time, daughters of dust, sons of great visions. We are sisters of mercy, brothers of love, lovers of life and the builder of nations. For each child that's born, a morning star rises and sings to the universe who we are. So no great surprise to those of you who know me, music is a huge source in my spiritual journey. From the folk music of my hippie RE classes, uh, to the jazz my father rediscovered and shared with me in my tweens. To the Europop music of my teen years, thank you 80s. To the opera my mother taught and sang. B by the way, don't count on opera to give you answers. The music is fab, but those plots are wackadoodle. <laughs> but I listen to rhythm and pulsing beats and Dave Brubeck's 5-4 time, and I suppose it helps me hear the universe. I prefer lyrics to poetry, even though I'm told they're the same thing. My inner spirit has a soundtrack, and it's got breadth. 
Bach and the Indigo Girls get equal time, and that's okay. Thanks to my UU upbringing, Kat Stevens, thank you, Paul and Jane, inhabits a healthy chunk of my inner MP3 player. At the end of July, Faith Leonard, member of our church and of our awesome staff, offered a reading which witnessed the love of God in all creation, loving each other fully for who we are. Thanks to my childhood congregations, an early and growing cultural acceptance of LGBTQ people was part of my actual church experience. It varied in different congregations, but blessedly was way ahead of the national consciousness. No one ever declared from my childhood pulpits that my queer friends, my biracial friends, my non-Christian friends were anything less than human and worthy of respect. For this, I am daily grateful. That was an easy cherry pick, cherry pick to respect others as you would be respected. So uh, I love listening to Bill Brock uh, as his voice is radio quality, as you may know, and his heart is large. His responsible search for truth and meaning seems to my ear so much deeper and less messy than my own. Listening to him and later to Al Powers, I wondered not for the first time if coming from a more rigid, defined religious background as they both did, makes the move to a UU home more definitive? I mean, I grew up in UUism. I can't say I chose it deliberately, really, except perhaps in one way. So Linda Lemons recently reminded me that Reverend Stringer used to end his membership Sundays saying, you became a member not when you signed a book, but when you were disappointed and came back anyways. In that way, I have chosen to be a UU over and over and over. So too often I felt my religious upbringing gave me no clear answers. Like, is there a God? I was offered visions of earth goddesses, a vengeful, a vengeful Old Testament God, a buddy Jesus. When I was nine, I was in an early version, again, a lot of experimentation in the 70s in RE, at least at the church I was at. Uh, I was in an early version of the church around the corner curriculum. Do they even do that still? That's what it was called for a while. We went to a Jewish temple, a black church, and a televangelist. Variety. At the end of the course, I had no answer to the question of God, but I discovered that I don't like to be yelled at in church. <laughs> and church isn't church without music. So to this day, I'm a little white, educated UU kid. And every time I hear gospel music, I come out in goosebumps. None of the messages are my messages, per se, but that music of faith, so from Bach to gospel, and back again, uh, stirs me like nothing else. I don't understand it, so it's a kind of magic. That's where my magical thinking comes in. Later, I also found I, I liked laughter in church, <laughs> uh, because shared joy is as close to God as I have ever found. Shared joy when we sing together, shared joy when we laugh together. That's, that's about as close to God as I've ever felt. So I stuck those in my basket when I moved on. So I love listening to how people found you use them. <laughs> um, Bill and Al both concluded, hey, I've been a UU for years. I just didn't know it. I've heard that so many times. I love it. Sarah Chung said that she just knew this was the place for her. It's where she was supposed to be. When I was exploring colleges in my teens, I visited Grinnell down the road. And I came back and I told my mom, hey, they're you, you, and they don't even know it. <laughs> uh, technically, they were congregationalist, but I claimed them nonetheless. So 
so often in my four years at Grinnell, uh, intellectual exploration would follow, however unwittingly, the humanist manifesto that Al shared this summer. The value of responsible science, innovation, and the arts, that humans are part of nature and have inherent worth and dignity. Familiar? So to quote the manifesto, we accept our life as all and enough distinguishing things as they are from things as we might wish or imagine them to be. We welcome the challenges of the future and are drawn to and undaunted by the yet to be known. So college offered an abundance of wisdom to pick from, as well as more folk music. So that was all good. Laura Kim told us to look to nature and let it amaze us. Sally encouraged us to look at people and see them. Al believes that fundamental rules apply to everyone. Be good and do good because it's the right thing to do. Eliot quoted our old friend, poet Mary Oliver, who asked us, what is it you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? Sarah declared her belief that focused energy in prayer, in activism, could manifest change. I find I envy her stated belief that events unfold as they're meant to, and thus on a grand scale, all is well with the universe. I hope so. Sometimes I even feel it. I feel it most deeply when I see people coming together to do good, sometimes accidentally. I nearly always feel it when humans come together to sing or laugh with joy. So just this summer, I filled my basket with cherries aplenty, ideas, inspirations, challenges. I look forward to what fruit this next year will provide. Thank you, summer friends, for sharing your bounty. After the service in the forum, beginning about 30 minutes after this service, you can share what inspirational cherries you've picked along the way. Please rise as you are able and join us in singing hymn number 108, one of my favorites. That's a great thing about doing the service, by the way, you get to pick the hymns. My life flows on in endless song.
the prophet's challenge to confront harm, to respond with justice, compassion, and the transforming power of love. This is now our resolve. Our, I'm so Gen X. Our closing words are from a beloved source for me, the Muppet movie. <laughs> Life's like a movie. Write your own ending. Keep believing. Keep pretending. We've done just what we set out to do. Thanks to the lovers, the dreamers, and you. Go making peace.